All right, this is the next episode of Truth Wrestling Fans Discussions. Continuing our Clash of the Champions review series. This is going to be WCW Clash of the Champions 21. Your host, Mike? I'm Frank. Well, let's get into it. Uh, this was uh, pretty much setting up Starcade 92 Battle Bowl uh, with some of the matches, especially the King of, the King of Cable tournament mm-hmm. that they had going on. We'd have a semifinals match tonight. We also have a boxing match, a grudge match, an intergender grudge match, I should say as well as uh, the Unified Tag Team title main event. So here we go. November 18, 1992, Macon, Georgia. Ross, uh, Jim Ross and uh, Jesse the Body Ventura are doing the commentary. Uh, before the, the night even started, uh, the early, they showed the way in earlier from Paulie and Medusa uh, for their upcoming intergender match. Remember, Paulie fired Medusa, mm-hmm. so she's no longer... Oh, have it, yeah. yeah. She's no longer part of the alliance, but the alliance is on its last leg at this yeah, point right. anyway, right. unfortunately. Plus, Tony Schiavone interviewed Bill Watts in regards to the card tonight. Could have made it a little better, Bill, but hey, it is what it is. Um, then uh, Teddy Long uh, interviewed Michael Hayes, and he had mentioned uh, collecting the bounty on Eric Watts. And, of course, later on during the night, he even says, I'll collect it on your daddy. That would have been a cool uh, ma- uh, match, the Freebirds versus the Watts. The Watts yeah. oh, oh, my God. Surprised they never did it, considering that he literally said, I'm going to put a bounty on you and just for the hell of it, I'm going after your old man. You know, it sounded like they were going to start. Yeah, something. I guess it was conflict of interest because, you know. Man. And Eric Watts is, you know, they tried. Poor kid, they tried. Yeah, he just, it just yeah, well, wasn't coming along. Yeah. So, no. And then, of course, uh, still before the night, Teddy Long uh, had said that uh, Pillman suffered a knee injury. <laughs> so Jesse, the body mentor, interviewed Brian Pillman at ringside. Mm-hmm. Uh, out here comes Brad Armstrong. Uh, Pillman wanted to apologize to Armstrong, and then he hit Armstrong with his yeah. crutch, so we knew it was BS because that Double is our opening match. Again. Yes, yeah, because the last clash of the champions, they were supposed to have a match, yeah. and uh, Brad Armstrong was injured. Was injured Brian yeah. Pillman got upset about it. And so and I guess him, he, man. yeah. And then he, this time he takes a page out of Armstrong's book yeah. and the match literally didn't, I don't even think Armstrong looked like he was even ready to compete. No. He still had the brace on his knee. No, it's just Still limping around. The bell rings. Pim- Pillman clipped the injured leg and got the pin. 25 okay. seconds were over and done. See ya. Awful, awful opening match. Yeah, that was... So, and of course, following that, they had a video package of what led up to Paul Lee and Medusa back from staging from Halloween Havoc. And then Michael Hayes interviewed Paul Lee. He would be the stipulation would be he would have one hand tied behind his back during the match. It's like Stone Cold. It's like Stone yeah. Cold versus Vince McMahon. <laughs> what changed the rating wars forever? <clears throat> I loved it. So our next match on the card was Eric Watson, Kensuke Sasaki versus Arn Anderson and Bobby Eaton. Mm-hmm. This, I don't know. I, I I couldn't get into this match. I don't think the fans could get into this match. Really. I think the fans wanted to really cheer for Anderson and Eaton, but they really couldn't. They were cheering for Hayes because Hayes is a, is a Southern legend. Eric Watts, like I said, they just, they, they pushed him. They tried. It didn't work. It failed. However, he Watts applied the STF on Eaton and got the submission. So surprisingly, Watts and Sasaki get the victory over Anderson and Eaton. I honestly thought it would have went the other yeah. way, but hey. So, following that match, Tony interviewed Teddy Long and Johnny B. Bad about the upcoming boxing match that they had. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh huh. Plus, Tony interviewed Scotty Flamingo along with Vinny Vegas. Vinny Vegas, yeah. And Diamond yeah. Dallas Page. And, you know, I, I love Vinny trying to act like he's from an Italian uh, from Brooklyn. Hey, you know, we got the thing going here. Well, he's, yeah. well, he's doing, he's supposed to be, what, what's the movie again? Oh, My Blue Heaven. My blue oh, yeah. oh God! Yeah, he's like, hey, we we got the facts yeah, going yeah, on it's... this guy. It was, oh, it, it, Kevin, it was silly. It was, it was, it was that like, was honestly out of all the work, bad gimmicks. That was the best. The best. Of the worst, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. well, the boxing match would consist of three two-minute rounds with a one-minute rest period in between. Comedy of uh, it was bad though. The thing is, all oh, those every boxing time matches. We have a boxing match. Bad. It's bad. It's from always... the, from the early '80s, and if they try yeah, it now, yeah. it's it's never going. to... Scotty Flamenco Raven. Yeah. Funny thing Polo. is, though, but the funny Polo. thing is, <laughs> no, but think about this: you got you got Nash, who's going to be the WF champion at some point, IC champion, WF champion, tag team champion, right? Mm-hmm. Scotty Flamenco, aka Raven, ECW champion, and Diamond Dallas Page, who's going to be the WCW champion. 
And of course, you know, Vinny Vegas going to be eventually WCW champion too. Yeah. So you got all this yeah. gold that's coming into the eventually. future. Eventually, but right and now, let's not dude's... forget Johnny B. Bad. Oh, yeah, IC champion, Mark Merrow, IC yeah. champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, gold, you know, and and he's a Golden Gloves, uh, Golden Gloves. Gold, thank you. Couldn't get it out. Golden Gloves boxing champion. So I mean, it just didn't fit with his character. That's the problem. No, he was legit. Not, he not the Johnny background. B. Bad. No, yeah, yeah, it just didn't. Yeah. When they changed Mark Merrow in WWE when he came back from the injury, it kind oh, of fit, even though uh, it, it, man. It, it was a stinker. Yeah, I liked it. Whatever. Marvelous. Came in. Marvelous. <laughs> yeah, when they changed it to Marvelous, you might as well just yeah, cut, yeah. cut him loose because yeah. you, you just ruined him. It was over. Anyway. Now, speaking of ruined and should it be over, round one, the ref was naturally distracted by Vinny Vegas. Uh, Flamingo clothesline Johnny B. Bad. Here we go. Yeah, and after round one, uh, Paige filled Scotty's glove with water. Oh my god, and the referee's not even catching any of this. Oh man. Round two, Paige again. Now Paige distracts the ref and Flamingo hits Johnny B. Bad with the glow loaded gun glove. And Flamingo gets the second round TKO over Johnny B. Bad. This was wow. I don't know. Right. That was I think this was the worst of the boxing matches. Yeah, that's you know, considering a lot because you know the, the brawl for alls were pretty bad as well. So Following that segment, uh, they had a sh- they showed a video f- uh, feature for Starcade '92 Battle Bowl and showed last year's drawing uh, when Sting and Abdullah the Butcher were paired together versus Brian Pilton and Bobby Eaton. That was funny. I love that one. And Abdullah was so happy to be Sting's partner; he's going to beat the hell out of him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh wow! And then, of course, that, they showed last year's Battle Bowl where Sting was the winner. This year, Jesse Ventura and Missy Hyatt drew the first two teams for Starcade '92. And it would be Cactus Jack and Johnny B. Bad versus Dangerous Dan Spivey and Heavy Metal Van Hammer. That's oh, God. I like the concept. It's just the guys that were paired yeah. together. Was all off. But I like the concept of the Yeah, the idea, the idea was. And then you get a ring eventually. And you don't, it doesn't matter because they can't catch it. Well, at least if you're paid, you can't. Anyway, the next match on the card was a two-on-three handicap match. Now, it was supposed to be Ron Simmons and Robbie Walker. Mm-hmm. versus Cactus Jack, the Barbarian, and Tony Atlas. But Robbie Walker was injured. So out comes, according to Ross, Simmons' yeah. partner. They had no idea who he was. It was two cold Scorpio. Two cold Scorpio, we, yeah. We find, find out later. Yeah, two cold the Scorpio, and then you got Samba Samba. And no Butch Reed, because he was he was gone after uh, shortly after the last uh, clash when he came yeah. out. Yeah, he was done. So they, they replaced secret him weapon. with Tony Atlas. The secret weapon. Two cold Scorpio. Oh, uh, man, underrated. It was fun to watch. Big yeah, time it was fun to watch. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Until you get to WWE. Supposedly he beat up Hawk. I don't know if I believe that story, but. I heard that, yeah. It's it was the, the dark whole... side of the ring. It was on the dark yeah. side of the ring. Yes, yes, the uh, yeah, collision in Korea. Yeah, I don't not, know about that. I'm not I, I, quite sure. Yeah. But I know who knows. Exactly. So, um, the match itself, not bad. You know, Ron Simmons. I would have liked if Ron Simmons defended the championship again on this clash. Instead of something like this, and again, yeah, WCW champion mid card match again. I don't Never. understand it. I don't either. Um, th- you know, this was a great match. Scorpio showing what he can do as he's the rookie in the ring. He hits his 450 splash on Atlas and gets the pin. And um, Ron Simmons again, two cold Scorpio get the victory. And Ross uh, said, we don't even know his name. Of course, after the match, Jesse Ventura interviewed both of them, mm-hmm. and we come to find out his name is Too Cold Scorpio. So, again, very underrated or athlete. Funk. Oh, geez. Or then finally when Vince realized, oh, it was crap. That was yeah. Scorpio. Scorpio, yeah. But by then, nobody cares. Just, yes. Unfortunately. But very underutilized in WCW mm-hmm. and even in ECW. So and then of course they had a video package on Jesse's strong strongest arm tournament. They really oh. love doing the tournaments right around here. They had quite a few of them going. Of course they had round one where they showed Ron Simmons defeated Steve Austin, Barbarian had defeated Arn Anderson over the top, and and still to happen, uh, Van Hammer versus Vinny Vegas and Vader versus Ivan Kol- uh, Nikita Koloff. Excuse me. They would, again, this night was also too many backstage segments, interviews, all this stuff. Just get to the fighting and let's go. Because again, Michael Hayes interviewed Paulie dangerously about the upcoming. That was funny though. The, the, Paul, the Paulie stuff was funny. Yeah, it was because Somewhere now we got the uh, 
yeah, Medusa versus Paulie. Now, Paulie and Michael Hayes get into the ring. Somebody comes out claiming to be Medusa. Right. You know it wasn't Medusa. No. And Paulie whacks him over the head with the t- with the phone. He celebrated. Knocked out. I yeah. like how he had all the gear on. He had like the the equipment on, like that, the headgear. Yankees. Uh, That's funny. Yeah, he's sporting Yankee funny. gear at, at their worst possible time. That's funny. I love it. I love it. Um. Now, when he went for a kiss of Medusa, he they when they realized when they pulled the wig off, this wasn't. Uh, the, matter, matter of fact, it was the, uh, his assistant trainer Mike Thor. And then Medusa comes down and attacks Paul E. Now, this was only a five minute match. Thank grudge God. match. Thank yeah, God. exactly. Um, now, Paul E had left. He would go down the aisle. He had enough. He's trying to leave. Medusa follows, comes back carrying him. And of course, as Medusa was getting in the ring, Michael Hayes trips her up. She falls flat on her face. Damn it. Um, she also, during the match, uh, took Paul E's helmet and his shorts off. And the match ended in a draw when Paulie left again. So this was pretty much nothing resolved yes. here. We'll just if you just put in a five minute thing, it's not really you don't have a after whole lot everything of faith that, in that this. the thing is after everything that 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 Paulie put her through, embarrassing her, they should have just had her go over. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Should have gone her payback, and that should have been the end. Do of it. do an intergender tag team match. Bring somebody in that you know can destroy Medusa, and have a tag team match. Let her partner with somebody. Paul E with the with a woman, and it, it doesn't have to be somebody major for Medusa because it's Paul E. I mean, you can get yeah, anybody. but I guess the thing was between them two, so I, I don't. I know, you know. It just, I just, just felt like just, she should have gone over. She should have just gone over. It, it was because what they did, it just felt hinky. It just, I don't know. It's just they wasted a good opportunity of that feud that they built up for so many months because Paul E hated her. So, following the match, the, they showed the video for King of Cable. How uh, during the tournament, yeah. Rude had defeated Barry Windham. Sting defeated Brian Pillman. Vader defeated Tony Atlas. Man, Tony's getting no love here lately. And, of course, Dustin Rose defeated the Barbarian. The winner Maybe. would be crowned at Starcade. And then, of course, Tony Schiavone interviewed Vader and Harley Race how he's going to be the King of Cable. That's like their, that's that's the original King of the Ring. Um, yes. Their version of it. Mm-hmm. Jake was supposed to be in it. Jake got replaced by Barbarian but because he had... Gotten fired. I guess he got gotten fired yeah. by Watts. Yeah. Cause Watts took the snake away from him and then they had a whole disagreement about the snake and the contract. He reneged on the original contract that he had prior to Watts getting there. So then Jake was gone, which is a shame because he's, he was a the great. La- the, the, the last clash in the Halloween Havoc was, was great. Jake yeah, put on a, a hell of a show. He can still write, still wrestle. I mean, uh, yeah. It's it's a, I blame it more on Watts if anybody yeah, yeah, because yeah. a lot of people had they their say that with this man. that's the thing they said Jake oh Jake had problems and I'm sure he did but nobody has anything Who else nobody well I mean his issues were a lot worse than a lot of other people but this is nobody true. has anything good to say about Watts at the, especially at, no. like at this time period so yeah so our next match on the card is a semifinals match in the King of Cable. It is the United States champion, Ravishing Rick Rude, minus the mustache. I did not like mm-hmm. that. Versus Sting. And, uh, and again, you never have a bad rooted Sting match. But this one was a little more slow. And you could you you knew automatically, and I remember watching this live. I knew when they kept talking about the 20-minute time limit and the judges. Mm-hmm. And if it goes to the time limit, they would vote you know, on it. And, yeah. and the pace of the match, the wear down moves, I knew yeah, this yeah, is going to yeah. end in, a, in yep. a judge final decision. And, of course, your three judges for the match was Larry Zabisco, Hiro Matsuda, and Ole Anderson. So, they, and like I said, they would announce the winner if there was no pinfall or submission in the 20-minute time limit. Well, there wasn't. They tried. Sting had just gone. Remember he actually. Rude was trying to get him into the uh, at the end. He was trying to get him in the uh, the Rude Awakening with this thing got out of it, put him in the Scorpion Deathlock, and then time expired. Let's not forget the Stinger Splash he tried on the outside, where he completely hit the guardrail, and that's where Rude got the upper hand for most of the match. But I mean, these guys were both suffering their back and and, and abdomen. They they were really going to work on each other, and like you said, once he he put the Scorpion Deathlock on, the the bell had rang. So. The referee gets the score sheets from the judges. Matsuda goes with Sting. I love when uh, you know the, re- the announcer says, "Well, we have a split decision." So Sting wins the match. He goes on to the finals, and he would face Vader at Starcade for King of Cable. Woo! You, you get the trophy. You get Cable for life. No, I guess I don't think so. I don't know. 
So, of course, after the decision, Rude tried attacking Sting, but unsuccessful. This rivalry has been going on for years now. It's never going to stop. So our next uh, match on the card, the main event for the Unified Tag Team Champions uh, Championship, the NWA and WCW Tag Titles. You have Barry Windham and Dustin Rhodes defending against Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Shane Douglas. Mm -hmm. And this was a very interesting match considering this is Rhodes and Steamboat were friends. This is kind of a fan favored match. Yeah, they're all baby faces. However, one guy wasn't seeing it that way. And you could tell that something wasn't right. Shane Douglas, man. Oh, he's on fire, man. Got Mr. Dynamic. He's getting getting somewhat of a push. Tag team division, that's about it there. And then shortly off after, he'll be heading to ECW and then, you know, becoming the Dean. Unfortunately. Another guy that was under underutilized everywhere except in ECW. In ECW, they saw his true talent. I don't know. The uh, match took a turn when Rhodes and Steamboat co- co- collided in the ring, and it was a looked like a groin shot for Steamboat. He was really hurting. Uh, Rhodes didn't go for the pin, which made Barry Windham irate. And this is where it started turning as far as we're not all. So you saw Michael's um, marginality. Yeah. Yeah, and, and this is weird considering there hasn't been really any dissension, really, between the two of them until up really up to this point. And so, Wyndham, Wyndham tagged himself in, was beating down Steamboat. Dustin Rhodes is still talking to him from from the uh, from the apron. Uh, when when Wyndham went for the cover, Rhodes pulled him off. Now you now something is not right here. Rhodes is forgetting the big picture. The tag team titles are on the line. I understand he's your friend, but this is business. Mm-hmm. You're, you're about to, you're, you're you're in danger of losing your tag yeah. team titles, yeah. and that's what is actually going to happen. Because when uh, Douglas comes in, he hits his belly to belly suplex on Wyndham, and they get the pin. Steamboat and Douglas are now the unified tag team champions, and Wyndham and Rhodes are, uh, as so famously said, they're on the short end of the purse money, and so. Friendship or not, you just lost your tag team yeah. titles. And now your you tag team partner it. has an issue with you. Yeah. So what happens? They wind up going at it. So Barry Windham and Dustin Rhodes are no longer. And, of course, when Steamboat and Douglas were interviewed after the match, Steamboat said, I consider him my friend. Yeah, well, friendship should have been left at the with the bell ring. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. And... This is what's going to cause uh, Rhodes and Wyndham to be on opposite sides at the next clash in a, in a Thunder Cage match. So that's going to be interesting to see. But at this time, Steamboat yet one more time tag team champion in WCW NWA. This time with Shane Douglas. So that match wasn't was, was pretty interesting to watch. Except like, like I said, especially when uh, the tide changed and Wyndham was getting very agitated at Rhodes mm-hmm. and. Then, Tag team no more. Yeah, I don't know if he snaps. It's... Overall, the card, I'd give it a 5 out of 10. I would have loved to a... see Ron Simmons defend the title again, maybe be closer to the main event. Uh, way too many interviews and stuff. I don't know. They just dealt a lot of that backstage segment that they filling up the time. And I just, it took away. You could have probably had another match in there. Got some more guys, you know, to get, you know, some TV time or whatnot. But I mean, 5 out of 10 is not bad considering we've seen some pretty awful ones in the past. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Well, that's our review. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.